three, two, one, go. Welcome to Grounds After Rounds. All right, cool. Let's count down. All right. Five, Five four, three. Welcome. Oh, we're in it. Oh, we're in it. <laughs> That's what she said. Welcome <sighs> to... Who was it? Uh, who was it? Uh, I think it was Kevin. I forget what we were talking about, but I basically said... I basically said to him, like, and... It, the, essentially, the joke is um, I am now selling... Kevin now owns the gym. Oh, okay. like whatever it's like. Kevin now owns the gym. I was like, you're fifty percent or both of ours. I just gave it to him. Okay. Yeah, just gave him the whole thing. Okay. Um, I said, but just Good so you know, I said just so you know, Jax that is coming up. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's was a have fun, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, but I, but I, but I said to him, oh, by the way, um, there's a big like HR file on the back that I'm going to need you to go ahead and jump on top of. <laughs> Most of it's like ninety percent of it's joy, but it's uh, I'm going to need you to go ahead and, and get on that, Kev. I think that's why I was like, yeah, I'm going to hit Jim's all yours. Just FYI, go and take care of the HR files in the back. Nice. nice. Um, anyway, good time. Does he think it's going to make money? Like, does he think he's getting money out of it? Like, what did it, why, why did he take it? What was his reason? Uh, I don't think I, I don't think he really took it. I just gave it to him. Oh, yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. Like herpes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly how I gave it to him. Oh, you gave it to him in the same way? Youch. <laughs> the toilet seat thing is a myth. <laughs> I have a cleaner joke. Hit me. All right. Why was the office of cantaloupes so glum? Oh my gosh. Why? Because they were melon colleagues. Oh, melon colleagues. <laughs> Good one. For those of you that don't get that, melancholy is a synonym for sad, or glum is a synonym for sad, and melancholy is a homonym for melons which right. cantaloupes are a melon and they were all colleagues because they worked in the office together so they were melon colleagues which could make somebody think oh were they sad were they glum well if you throw so a, top, it's a play on words if you throw on top of that the melons can't get married okay why because they cantaloupe ah <laughs> see and then oh and he left me hanging oh my bad we all saw that there it is. yeah <laughs> the fact that you have that like so that always cracks me up did we access some part of your brain that usually yes. is turned off and just you know what i mean like it, it's never that it's not in there it's just a matter of figuring out how to open that door <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was laughing at myself I was laughing inside my own head with the, oh my gosh, I've got a cantaloupe joke, just ready, like set it up. <laughs> and, ha and, and has that sentence ever been said before? I have a cantaloupe joke. I'm sure, <laughs> probably not, but I'm sure. Uh, yeah, right, it makes me, so I was watching uh, the Jim Gaffigan special on Netflix, the Pale Tourist, Pale American. I haven't seen that one yet, yeah. So it's, uh, I it's only two episodes. They're about an hour each. And I'm guessing- Is it a stand-up special or is it a- Yeah, but okay. the, the premise was, so he was doing a, a world tour, mm -hmm. I guess. And when he would go to a certain country, he would like keep notes. Mm -hmm. And then I guess one of the shows in each of the country tours, he would basically just do new routine based on that country's little idiosyncrasies. Okay. Yeah. So the first one is about Canada. And so he's in- I don't know where what city he's in, Alberta, maybe, or Toronto or something. And he's making fun of all the rest of Canada and them. And, yeah. and it's really funny and it's very timely. And like so he's making fun of their food and Tim Hortons and the mm. you know, politics and the way that they're geographically structured, and yeah. a little bit of their history. And then he makes fun of Americans and Canadians and their relationship. And it's funny. And it's it's like, God, did he just because he, I mean, comedians to do an hour bit will spend right. like a year you know yeah. three minutes four minutes at a time yeah you know kind of working bits and testing them and testing them and then eventually they you know over you know six seven eight nine months maybe they have like 40 minutes of content mm -hmm. that has been all tried and tested and then they'll run the whole 40 minute show a couple different places and <laughs> then they <laughs> film the special that. so like i'm curious like because they don't all hit it's, right. not, it's not all gold mines but yeah. most of it's good and it's just gaffigan being like 
oh my god i can't believe he's still talking about that yeah <laughs> you know he does that like <laughs> which the ones he does he supposedly plays this like like one of his inside voices is like a woman in the crowd yeah if he talks about canada one more time he's such a jerk <laughs> so i've been doing it because like I made fun of 5 a.m. this so morning. Good. You know, you know, we did the you know, like the running warm-up, you know, right. general warm-up, high yeah. knees, butt kickers. And I go, all right, we're gonna do across the gym floor, high knees. Your 5 a.m. high knees look like this. <laughs> what I would like them to look like by the time you're done is this, you know, and I give yeah. I give them the and I can't believe he's making fun of us again. It's so early. <laughs> they didn't laugh. The inside voices. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny, like his he, his timing's so good with it too, because he's. I remember when he was talking about hot pockets and one of his old ones, yeah. like, and I remember like it was funny, but I remember sitting there thinking to myself, like, is he still talking about hot pockets? And at one point, he he like comments on that as like, oh, he knows, because yeah. he knows, like, yeah, there's times he runs on and you're like, he's still going. <laughs> <laughs> I love the bit he does about, or maybe that was Louis C.K. I can't remember which one about eating a cinnabon in the airport i think that was him yeah upon arrival like you know what i mean like like, like he's 15 minutes from being home and having all the food in the world that he would want to eat yeah but he stops at the airport <laughs> to eat a cinnabon and the guy working at the cinnabon is like are you, are you sure you, you really want this yeah give me the fucking cinnamon i want yeah. it they put it on my plate put it put it back god dang it just give me the damn cinnamon <laughs> He stood there in stood in the, the terminal eating the cinema, <laughs> hating himself. That's so funny. So I think that was him. Yeah, I think that was, or yeah, no, that's not, him know. or Louis C.K. So one, like one of them. I one know Gavin them. has mentioned Cinnabon. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, so what made me think? Oh, because like as I was watching it, his ability to make connections with Canadian humor and yeah. stuff made me think of you and like your ability to like there's so much in there and it's just a matter of like i wonder if that's the way comedians are where they're thinking mm -hmm. of funny shit all the time and they have you know hours and hours of routine it's just a matter of accessing it yeah and then yeah i think it's uh it's i, I type of all the time it's like yeah quantity over quality like just see it gets stick, throw against the wall and see what sticks that was funny in your dad's yeah. in your uh your speech I think it's, and that was my dad but it's like you do it so much like it's it's almost like a uh not that i'm performing but it is you it are is performing yeah. a performance yeah. but it is like uh yeah i'll test stuff out on the t's before i try to <laughs> the t's. but that is like sometimes i love like norm mcdonald's um stand up and stuff sometimes is so funny because it was like like whenever he would do a roast i remember when he did the um the correspondence like at the dinner at the white house okay and uh he like intentionally like bombs yeah like he just he says jokes that are stupid and lame and like they make sense but you just get like these collective groans and uh so they'll do it there he did it like yeah rose he does it at, uh his stand-up was just uh i mean weekend updates sometimes too was like you could tell the jokes that he would make you could tell the, the crowd was like uh i always was, wonder i always wonder about people that don't like dad jokes or like corny jokes you know what i mean and, and yeah. it's the uh, like are you so like sad inside or like do you know what i mean like it's like it's not I, standing in line at the dmv right like, like you don't a, it, there doesn't have to be like i get it it's not it it it's a it's meant to be bad like it's yeah. meant to be corny and kind of obvious and so is it like a delivery is it a commentary on the person delivering it is it like it's just like I think part of it is like the the punchline ends up being something so simple, right? And I kind of like maybe it's like a, I can't believe it's that simple. And like, are, are you, is your is that. your day and your time so sacred right. that you can't spend those twenty seconds hearing somebody offer that? And, and even if it's just a oh that was that was silly. Like I guess it's the same thing of like. Uh, like dancing if like there's a song on and somebody's dancing and being silly it's like that's dumb stop being silly it's like yeah. are you that you're a horrible dancer yeah like well right that i'm doing that on purpose like joshua the other day was like being silly and dancing and it was it was very funny and it yeah. was like oh that's kind of funny it's good, like, bud. yeah 30 seconds of like oh just 
be silly. I don't even see this. And so the, oh, what were we listening to? I forget what the song was, but yeah, he was, it was hilarious. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I, I always, that like even these joke, this dad joke generator, they're not all gems. I mean, even mm. that cantaloupe one, not, not very funny. Melon colleagues, but yeah. <laughs> right, like that, that yeah. I guess it's just like, and maybe it's um well, I feel like are people like just conditioned that like dad jokes are dumb, dad jokes are kind of like lame and corny. And so like yeah, are you conditioned that, that like is conditioned to the point that it's funny, like I love that we're diving deep on like, but it's it's a uh, it's the like, it's, it's the uh, reaction by by the it's the same thing sort of in the the blog posts that I've been writing of sort of I'm just so I'm intrigued and it just it 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 tickles my curiosity around. Like the second somebody sees a workout, like, well, I can't do that. Yeah. I, yeah. I want to be like, okay, so you've been coming for nine months, mm-hmm. a year, year and a half. Like, uh, of course you can't. Like, c- yeah. can we just go ahead and establish like, yes, I, I know this. Yeah. You know this. Yeah. Like if your process is the need to say, I can't do this. And then eventually come to some sort of middle ground. I respect that. But can we also acknowledge that every time you say that, you do cement in a negative perspective and version of yourself Mm -hmm. that is unhealthy and counterproductive to your other stated goal of wanting to get better. And so it's sort of like, like, I know that eating cookie dough raw from the freezer is not going to be beneficial to my long-term health. So therefore, if I say out loud, I don't want to eat cookie dough, but then I make an entire Tupperware full of cookie dough and put it in the freezer And when I eat three of them, say, God, I can't believe I'm such a bad person. I ate three cookie dough lumps. Well, I mean, you might as well just put the gun on the counter, load it, take the safety off, pull the hammer back and look at it and go, I sure hope that gun doesn't go off. Oh my God, I really hope it doesn't happen. And when the dog knocks the gun off and it fires, go, you dumb dog, right? Like, no, so true. you set yourself up for failure and then we're disappointed, angry at yourself when you fail. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. There's one culprit here. Yeah. <laughs> so if I walk in yeah. and I see what's on the board and I say to myself, well, I can't do I that. can't do that. Yes, you are. You are absolutely correct. That's the game we're playing. Like the game is we program beyond what we are capable of so that we can continue to find the version of what we can do mm-hmm. or else we're just gonna stagnate and eventually degrade because hey last time i checked we're all decaying yeah throughout so our bit. lives right so like and so the game is just to with like just hold that decay off as long as possible and then eventually like go and along that road we may find you know vibrance right improvement yeah happiness yeah satisfaction whatever it's it's funny um i think i say to joy and andrew a lot um where we're about to do something he's like i don't think i can do that and now like my automatic response is like well not with that attitude you won't yeah And, and andrew like now he even when he says it he as i'm saying it says no with that attitude and it's like and i i say it jokingly but it's also like it's so true right like it's exactly what you're saying like you've just decided that you it's sort can't of do this yeah. thing well you um amundsen greg amundsen had a goal setting seminar and uh he talked about language positive i can't do that were you at this uh-huh. like you, we were, yeah oh we went a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. and i yeah. still use a lot of the stuff yeah. but he he metaphorically elate, um equated it to when i watch somebody do a shitty squat right? Like rat, rat back rounded, knee, you know, heels off the ground on the toes. And I'm looking at them and let's say you're assessing me as a coach. Mm-hmm. And I see that person doing that squat. Not only do I let that squat go, but I look at them and I say, good, good. What's going to be your, not feedback to the athlete. What's going to be your feedback to me as the coach? What are you going to say? If I'm watching somebody do that shitty squat and I'm, I'm not only letting them do it, I'm 
saying to them, good, good job. Good job, Joe. Good. Not Joe. Sorry. Bad. Joe, your squats do just, not look like that. Joe. Sally. Yeah. No, crap. <laughs> we have a Sally too. Uh, yeah. Mortimer. Uh, <laughs> good job, Mortimer. <laughs> Morty. Um, what would you say to me? What would your assessment or your feedback to me as a coach be in my productive application of my skill set on that athlete in that moment? What do you say to me? Uh, I'm, what are you going to do to make that squad better? Or, or what the fuck are you doing, okay. dude? Do you know every time you tell that person sort of good, good. You, are, you are basically telling them that their shitty movement, which will eventually hurt them, you're a bad coach. Yeah. Like, stop it. If nothing else, just tell them, ooh, not yet. Yeah. Not yet. I need you to put your heels down. Keep your heels down. Yeah. Oh, better better we we learn as do that again but better we're yeah, gonna we, make those t-shirts we do that as we as professionals one of the first yeah. things we learn is remove good from your language mm -hmm. as a coach because good tells the athlete you're there you made yeah. it and none of us have made it ever there is always room to get better yeah so when somebody walks in and sees on the board i can't do that that's like a rounded back squat with the knee, you know, knees caving in, heels off the ground. So I don't have to tell the person like, Ugh, are you kidding me? You suck. Say something better. What I can say is, hmm, no rep. Try yeah. that again. Yeah. Walk in, da, 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 turn around, yeah. walk back to your car, get in the car, turn it on, turn the car off, open the door, get out, walk in the gym, What's the first thing you say when you walk, right? Like yeah. walk them back all the way to where the rep was good mm -hmm. until it falls apart. And if they can't even get out of their car without a, oh, I'm horrible. Oh, I'm whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's just replace it with a good rep first. Yeah. Good rep. Good I, rep. Yeah. Not good rep. Nope. <laughs> that, I, I, I mean, in all honesty, people, if you're listening to this right now, like, I've, I've reached a point where I can't take the, the self and the, just the, 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 the disrespect that people are allowing of themselves. themselves. Like yeah. you're better than this. You're all better than this. Yeah. Like it is, it is untenable. I would mm -hmm. say of all things, that is the thing that is the most exhausting of this, yeah. of this whole practice is People, the fact that they're showing up day in and day out and not giving themselves any credit for that yeah. makes me so sad. Yeah. Like it really is the part that like today is a great example. Mm -hmm. I make fun of the 5 a.m. a little bit, but also because I know and it's a fun back and forth, yeah. but they were awesome. Yeah. They were so great with the pistol work and the candlestick work mm -hmm. and they all tried the GHD and they made choices. Roger's the only one who did the GHD in the workout, mm -hmm. but it, but not because the other ones didn't want to each had a reason why stiff wanted to work on something else, yeah. just didn't want to do it today. But out of seven human beings, they all got on the GHD for at least a little bit. Right. And by the time we got to the pistol work, like smiles and everything, it, it was awesome. Yeah. So like I make fun because they're tired and they haven't woken up yet. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, but in the yeah. end, and I would say that across almost all the classes that, that we coach, even the evening classes when I guest coach from time to time, by the time we get there, everybody's doing it. Yeah. So be nicer to yourself from the beginning. Yeah. And who knows, maybe it'll be a little bit more fun along the whole path. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's, maybe. <laughs> it's funny, um, like going that, this is, it's like, it's like a mini part. I've, I basically have like two gratitude today, but one of them was uh, yesterday with Michelle when we were setting up for the wall balls and Kevin kind of someone like she grabbed a 14 pound ball. I was like, I don't think Michelle's ever held a 14 pound ball. And, but I saw her grab it. And I was like, all right, let's see, let's cool. Go. Let's see, go for it. Yeah. And, um, and she, and she did a few wall balls and uh, like the depth wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And um, it definitely like looked heavy. Um, like she was hitting the target, but the depth wasn't there. And uh, she ended up looking at me like, I think I might go lighter. I was like, Good call. And I was like, absolutely good call. And I said, such a good job. And, I, and she goes, she goes, yeah, those didn't feel good. I was like, yeah, they didn't look good, but 
I was like, hey, I'm really at like push the boundaries. I said it was like, I don't know why you grabbed a 14, but I'm really glad you did because I'm really yeah, glad you exactly. tried it. I'm really glad like you tried it. And now, and then she ended up using the 10 pound ball. And then like, and then it was, I think we even like for the the 10 pounds still was like over the course of that workout, still was gonna be relatively heavy, but she was hitting the depth while also hitting the target. I was like, let's just do 10 reps instead of 15. And like, let's just hone that in. And she crushed it yesterday. So one of the things about CrossFit that caught me at the very first thing, and that like, I used to, I haven't said this in a while, or but it was a place I'd, I'd spent so many years professionally and personally being surrounded by fucking no people. Yeah. People that their first response, no, no, that's impossible. From working with the big army, from working with the French, I just make the joke of like, anytime you pull into port and it was like a former French colony in Africa or, or somewhere where like it had French traditions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're going to need, uh, we're going to need potable water. We're going to need a, you know, an electric thing. Oh, this isn't, and uh, we're going to need like six mans. Of, oh, this is impossible. No, it is impossible. It is absolutely impossible. You'd be like, oh, oh okay. This is the husbanding agent, yeah. you know, agent that like, you know, organize. you'd be like, um, okay, well, so it's impossible, um, but we did submit the contract and in the contract, there was a price point. And so I'm just confirming what you already, okay, this is a good point, but this is good. It's going to be very, very hard. And I do, can I get to this timeline? No, it is. No, I do not think we can get this. And it's, you're like, well, but we have it on the contract. And the price, it is a very good point. It's okay, we can get this done, but it's going to be very, very expensive. And I see, I see, I see, I see. Uh, okay, so you're saying we can get this? Yes, I can. With you. Yes, but I'm not going to like any of it. <laughs> I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> yeah. And so it was like, it would take the, the, the Will Ferrell from three times. I, no, it is impossible. <laughs> really? Because we have it. Okay, but very expensive. And then finally, you'd get to yes, but <laughs> Americans always ask you for too much. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That was my experience of like everybody was no army, no, you know, you give yeah. a point in a point. No, can we do no, really? Because I mean, it would make sense, okay. But I mean, you're not going to get any support, okay. But I mean, when we do it, you're going to win and we're going to win, and everyone's going to look, okay, fine. You can have three trucks and a QRF and you'd be like, what just happened? Begrudgingly, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you better be thanking us and like, oh, okay. And so when I got into CrossFit and I went to like the first couple boxes you walk in and be like hey so we're yes I'll yeah. do that with you yeah. oh we're gonna be lifting like 10 pounds more than we should okay let's try it like everything yeah. was just a, a world of people who their default mode network was I don't know I've never done this before but <laughs> what's the worst that can happen and they would try it and people yeah. would get hurt and it was like stupid things yeah. like you have no business doing 300 pound deadlifts and a bunch of wall balls and ghd sit-ups yeah. and then we'd all not be able to walk the next day and you were just like we're really dumb but eh, what's the worst that could happen <laughs> right. it's the worst and we're it, not dead right like and that it was always a and then eventually you mature and you're like huh okay i still want to be a person For who says term. yes yeah. But is there a smarter way to do this? And yeah. you go get your level one and you learn about level two stuff. And you like, you know what I mean? Like you, you yeah. start to figure out like the attitude of curiosity. And that's where the curiosity, mm -hmm. you know, ideal came from. That yeah. attitude permeates into other parts of your life where when people come to you and say, hey, I got this problem or hey, shit's hitting the fan or whatever. The answer is like, hey, there's a worldwide pandemic that's going to shut down all your all the businesses. Ninety percent of you are going to go under. Then you go, hmm. Okay. Well, what can we do? Like, how do we solve this? What's the what's the problem? What are the skill sets and the assets I have? This is what I can offer, yeah. and you make it through make because it through. you say, huh? All right. And if you don't, eh, well, what's the worst that can happen? If you die, guess what? You don't have anything to worry about anymore because sure. you're not around. It's true. That's uh, that's from um, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Why worry? That's the. Did you ever read that or listen to it or watch the movie mm. or whatever? That was like mm. one of the things when the Earth was getting blown up because it was in the way of some new, you know, yeah, cos cosmos universal or cosmos construction company, and the guy who plays 
God, I forget what that his the character's name is. Star Lord. Sure, but it's uh, I like that. Which I actually was just watching Guardians of the Galaxy. Last night. Um, uh, he's all freaking out, and the guy who helps me, he's like, "Why worry? Right? If, if you're if you're about to die, why worry? Because if you're worrying, you're just making it more painful and horrible. Mm-hmm. You can't control it, and in the end, if you die." You got nothing less to worry left to worry about. So basically, what we'll say is, if you come in and you see forty minutes of burpee and right. rap, hey, you might die. Yeah, don't. But why it's worry. But it's <laughs> the work. The class is going to be sixty minutes. Yeah. Regardless. Yes. So why worry about what the ten minute workout is? Yeah. If that history is any guide, we're gonna offer some sort of scale modification stimulus to or. or scale or modification to yeah. get you to the stimulus in the 10 minutes yeah and at this stage in the game like as long as you're an active participant in the process mm-hmm. you're not going to get hurt right because we won't let you because yeah. that's bad for business yeah and i don't want you to get hurt because no. i love you and in a sense i probably love more of the, most of these people more than they love themselves based on their language yeah so all the loop back Find so the the thing from Amundsen was language, positive, active language. And when I say positive, I don't mean like you're the best. That's great. Yeah. It means some sort of action, like a positive, like I, I'm going to need a modification for that. Mm-hmm is a better rep than I can't do that. I can't do that. Okay. Um, even a question like GHD sit-ups. My knees are kind of hurting. I don't want to get into the GHD. I'm thinking I should do the straight leg sit-up version. Yeah. Or can I do a standing thing rather than get onto the GHD? Yeah. Oh, all the same stuff because mm-hmm. you're not going to do the GHD because you can't do the GHD, but you're already positively coming up with an action that is observable, measurable, repeatable, and a scale and a modification. Yeah. Give it a try, folks. It's a better rep. I said in between those two, even going back to Monday with the ring muscle ups, like another thing, like how many people in this gym have ring muscle ups? Yeah, four of us, five of us. Yeah, tops. Maybe. But plenty of people showed up and plenty of people got and they did awesome and that yeah. workout was that was a ton of fun to coach yeah today was a ton of fun to coach yeah it was a doozy because i will say today was the first time that this class plan felt more like wuo in that there was a definitive break between the general warm-up and getting everybody covered with the ghc yeah. then it was like a <laughs> pistols boom, boom, boom. yeah then a <laughs> and then back to the run yeah. and the the sit-ups at the end yeah. but it was fine yeah. and it was great like people actually did get a little sweaty but there wasn't any direct translation between the general warm up, the pistol work, mm-hmm. and then the whatever. But mm-hmm. who knows? Yeah, if pistols so. are coming. But that's, I mean, there's classes that are worth doing that way too. And as you said, I think this is one of those two with the two, with, I mean, the GHD, you could say the GHD being a higher skill movement, but knowing also that most people are just going to be doing sit ups because of the equipment limitation. Like those two movements are relatively lower skill. So then it becomes a little more herky jerky, I think. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, that's uh, that's big, and I think it's um. Yeah, I, I'm with you. The whole I can't do that mindset. Yeah, you're gonna be in and out here in an hour. I and and so like the um, um the less long haired, you know, arm tattooed <laughs> version off the air. Eric and I were talking about the you know the the, the full on commitment in right like yeah. that that I'm I am I'm fully embracing and want to continue to embrace like finding a different version of of myself but the old version of myself would have my answer would be this great go away like awesome like you're right you're 100 correct you can't do this mm-hmm. i will see you later like go somewhere else then right like that would have been because that's what you got yeah. if you showed up for small unit tactic day and you 
Chief, my weapon doesn't work very well. I can't do this. You know what they would say? Fucking truck is down the road. Don't lose your boots, right? Like, good luck. Leave your weapon. Yeah. Somebody else will use it. Yeah. Next, right? There was no time. You can't, you can't be in that environment. No, there was, it was a, certain exactly yeah. like you were there because you wanted to be there. And you were there because you knew that everybody else on the line wanted to be there because your other option was fucking shipping paint on a goddamn aircraft carrier. It was jail or pr prison or the Navy for most of those folks. And the guys that we worked with, I didn't want to work with those guys. I mean, we would if we had to, but we wanted to work with a group of people that wanted to be there, that knew what they were doing was hard and knew that it was worth it because it was hard. Yeah. And so language mattered. Yeah. What you fed your ears from your mouth mattered. And you didn't say, this sucks. Guess what? Yeah, you're right, it does. Get the fuck out of the pool. Like that was, if you were hanging on the edge of the pool deck at dive school or pool week or whatever, and you looked up at the instructor and said, I'm cold, this sucks. Well, guess what? They'd say, you know what's available? The shower. And you just bought yourself a seat. Next. Like, whoa, whoa. We watched it happen. Like wow. guys got washed out because the, I don't like this. Yeah. Like, oh, you don't? Sweet. Cool. I got to cut 15% of you this week. You just made my made job so much easier. Thank you. That's wild. That's not the world we're in. No. But God dang, that guy wants to drive the bus sometimes. <laughs> I mean, he so wants to get in the front and just be like, <laughs> <laughs> I got an easy solution for this problem, ladies and gentlemen. It's a well, lot glad. more efficient than what we're doing right now. I'm glad you're keeping him at least in the back. <laughs> so you know he's still there. He's just sitting in the back seat rocking right now. Yeah. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, let me drive. Oh my god, let me drive. This is so slow. <laughs> Sit down. I'll turn on frozen. Be quiet. Right, that's my that's my driver. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> in the context and the setting it that's an effective strategy yeah. Yeah. that's not the context and setting we're in here what it triggers in me is the same when i'm what i've done work on and looked at is it's it's uh, that feeling of and that's why i've got like it's that feeling of oh like it makes me sad that people disrespect themselves in that moment when I see in them so much more than maybe what they see. Yeah. And so in that, that's what I hold on. That's what I, when I get, I go, whoa, 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 whoa. They're just not there yet. Yeah. Love them more. Say like, oh, hey, be nicer to yourself. Yeah. Try it again. No, 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 no rep. I'm not, I'm not gonna let you get away with that because I like you right now more than you like yourself. And I know you have more. Turn around, come back in, try something else. Yeah. Positive, active statement, not what you just did. It's funny with um, I'm I'm listening to uh Hunt Gather Parent. Yeah, you were talking about it last um, week. And it's cool, like uh talking about like um you know how, getting your kids involved in the things that you do on a daily basis. And Ooh. so it's like um, you know, I could like I need to fold laundry and I need to get this laundry folded. Oh, and I could just say, oh my God, you're making me so nervous. Right and like, now. I, I could just say, go, I know where you're going with this. Oh my God, you're such a good parent. I would never know. Oh my God. Well, it's like I said, so I could say, and a lot of it's like fees clothes, right? Like a lot of it's fees clothes. And, and she has so many like extra clothes now that people like my, my sister-in-law has sent us like boxes. We had neighbors. It's so many clothes, like just exploding out of her closet. And um, I was like, we got to fold these and sort these. I could just say, Hey, fee, go watch a movie for 30 minutes while I do this. But instead, I like I I sat down with Fia. I was like, all right, babe. Like, first of all, first, my first one was like, I'm gonna pull it, pick two things, one you can keep and one you can donate. Mm -hmm. And she said, okay. That's good and, and but then she goes, but this is just pretend. <laughs> and I was like, and I and I was just like, okay, tell you what. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. It's such a good that that's such a good model. Would she notice? if certain things just never showed back up in the rotation so there are some things so, some yes some no gotcha like there's some where you, like you, she yeah. brought up something that she hasn't mentioned in months that yeah. i got rid of yeah and she brought it up recently yeah she's like, where's my i'm like hmm. ask your mom <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, but uh, that's where I think lying is okay. Yeah. I just I don't know. Maybe we uh, lost it. Must have lost it. Must have lost it. Yeah. But um. And then but yeah. So. <gasps> she stole it. <laughs> she probably is walking down the street. I went looking for it. Um, no, no. I mean, somebody else is walking down the street, oh, yeah. wearing it or carrying it. And yeah. That girl stole it. She don't know. Sorry, yeah. sorry, I interrupted you. No. But it's uh. But she was like, but this is just pretend. And the look on her face was like, but it was like, this is just pretend. And I was like. Okay, tell you what, like, <laughs> first thing is we need to fold all this stuff anyway, because yeah. Megan and I are going to sort through it. Um, I was like, tell you what, we just need to fold this. Will you fold this with me? Yeah. And I didn't even ask, I didn't even ask her, because I was like, I'm not asking, I was like, we're just going to fold this yeah, stuff so and we're going to we put go. it away. That's what we're doing right so now. So it's cool. And I like shoulder it. She, like, she showed me how she folds her undies and yeah. so forth. And then f- literally 15 minutes, we sit, I don't know, I literally, we f- for 15 minutes, we sat there, folded a bunch of her clothes and put them away. Now, were they beautiful tight folds? No. But is the way that she put them away, move. like she literally just sho- like she shoved them into her drawers yeah. and like in their way. And whereas like I also like in the past gonna be like, Fee, just let me do it. Like right, because right. it's a mess. Like it's a mess in her drawer. I don't know where her clothes are. And it's just one of those like, but she's never going to A, figure out how to do it if I'm always doing it. And B, if I just say, go watch a movie while I do this, right. then the expectation would become, oh, well, Dad folds my I'm null and void. Oh, that like I get to do this thing, and then see it's like a like with Fee in particular, she's very like not she wants to be involved. Uh She wants to be involved, and so it doesn't really matter what the task is. She just wants to do it. Like she might make a mess. Like I might have to clean it up, or we clean it up together. And sometimes it's really hard because it's like, I don't have time for like, I want to get this thing done. Mm-hmm. And so it's just one of those, like, you kind of have to let that go and just sh- let her figure it out. Because in the long run, it's going to be, it's going to make life a lot easier for everybody. So that and makes so it, yeah, that makes of, me think, right, th- that the effort. So somebody shows up six minutes late to class and they're already in that like downward spiral of I'm late, I suck. Yeah. What does it cost to take two extra minutes to engage, fix that rep? Mm-hmm. In the moment, you want to just be like, we are already six minutes late. Yeah. I've already lost, quote unquote, lost all this stuff that I had planned. Yeah. But if you spend those two extra minutes, fix the bad rep, yeah. and the last 52 minutes of class are infinitely better than not spending that and then you get nothing out of those 15 yeah. minutes and they're actually left with a bad experience and a bad so it always pays dividends kind of like rowing yeah. if i'm rowing and i take 10 extra seconds per 500 meter but that saves me two and a half minutes of rest mm-hmm. i just netted an extra a bonus two twenty minute two minutes and 20 seconds of work yeah if i net a bonus 15 years of quality relationship with your daughter yeah because what at the moment feels like oh my god this is taking so long for what yeah what else do we have to do nothing this is it this like is, this, this is the magic like i'm already in here doing it anyway, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? this is so like when i hear that that's that's such a cool connection that's mm-hmm. the the trigger is oh my god we got to get this shit done get yeah. it done get it you gotta get it done right. Yeah. Like, For get... what? Yeah. Like, what are you getting done? To done to do what? More yeah. annoying stuff like yeah. that triggers you and makes you angry, or just look at them and say, "Hmm, you know, this is so." Whenever you'd work with, whenever I would work with, um, you know, uh, units or elements from Sub-Saharan Africa or like um, coastal Western Africa, the, their culture. A lot of a lot of those cultures look at time differently than we do, where there we look at we would look at schedules and actually some Baltic countries are like this, too. We would look at, at schedules as like the, the SOE, the schedule of events is the thing. Mm-hmm. And we got to get through all this stuff in the planning conference because that and we can check it off the block and then I can turn it in and I can green light, you know, green yellow red light the assessment report of yeah. if i got through 70 percent of the agenda items that was qualified to be a green light if i got through 40 to 70 percent that's a yellow light if i got less than 40 percent of the agenda items that's a red light conference you got to do an assessment then you have to maybe schedule another one blah 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 
well, you'd show up at these countries and they measured success by whether we at some point establish some sort of lineage connection between our ancestors. And hmm. so introductions would take days wow. because you would meet Oh, what tribe are you from? Where are you from? Where did it tell? I don't know that. And then, oh, do you know such and such tribe? And so the, the conversation would become like 15 to 20 people trying to figure out what all the interconnections are. So if you did not in the SOE a lot, at least a day's worth of introductions, and it could be interspersed, like you could right. do like a 25, 30 minute introduction, and then maybe just like a brief on what the rest of the week is going to be. And then that's it, because then you got to go to lunch. Yeah. And then there's going to be introductions after the lunch. And then maybe you cover time. And then there's like a long break because everyone has to take naps. And then the dinner Did event, nap whatever. Time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There was definitely like, and, then, and you know, especially in you know, Southern Europe siestas and stuff right? right like the first day if you didn't schedule it that way if you tried to jam all this because we always right. do front end load jam everything in the first day nothing got done anyway because they're all just gonna sit around trying to talk and figure out who they are and then yeah. now you're behind schedule and da, 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 da. the second we figured that out we were going to south africa uh, and we would you know we were stopping in all these different countries the second we figured that out after the initial planning conference because the initial planning conference was all red and the Admiral's freaking out. He's like, oh my God, we spent thousands and thousands of dollars on this conference and we got nothing done. And I had this one guy, he was really good, this 06, and he would talk the Admiral off the ledge. I was like, let me plan the mid-planning conference differently. And so we did. And it was still a failure. It was yellow right. at best. We lied. <laughs> it was full on red. I mean, we didn't get anything accomplished, but we creatively captured the assessment. That was the 06. To the Admiral, he would say one thing. He would turn to us and be like, you motherfuckers better write this assessment. And it is at least yellow. I don't give a shit what you do. If you mention diving, count that. Count it as a thing. Like, I was like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I understand where you're coming from, sir. Got it. Got it. English major, know how to creatively write. We will definitely, we will definitely be yellow maybe even greenish yellow we'll see <laughs> so, don't get mad if it's red orange yeah there will be no red i promise there no red so uh but the difference was uh perspective coming at it with an intention of we must meet them where they are yeah but also in line with where we want to go yeah you're meeting fee where she is but with an eye towards whatever. And if, if the only thing you get accomplished is she enjoyed spending time with you. And as you were saying, yeah. interacted, got her engaged with what you were doing, your normal routine is anyway. Yeah. That's a relationship building. I turn that back to when somebody walks in, our, I always say this, we are in the relationship and experience business, yeah. not the fitness business. Yeah. Fitness is a nice secondary byproduct. Yeah. So if and I'm boat boat storage and launch third. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> Actually, sorry. We are in the boat storage sorry, right. and launching business first. Okay, this is relationship and experience business second. Fitness business third. Good catch. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast was brought to you by the town and city of Annapolis. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag water. <laughs> water access. Free, free water access. Uh, um, so if at the expense of those relationships and experience, mm -hmm. we get somebody through, quote unquote, a workout, was it really worth it? So I guess what I'm saying is be like fee. Yeah. meet i'll meet you 90 percent of the way you meet me 10 percent of the way yeah try for better reps yeah. fold your laundry just a little bit better and don't just shove it in the drawer yeah. but we'll spend all the time we need yeah figuring that out and i'll tell you and i liked it so you know when i was doing it by myself i'm all i'm sitting thinking to myself was like god there's so many damn clothes it was like blowing up like i was getting yeah angry. yeah 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 cycling up more and more right? and more i was like and and fee would have been happy watching a movie well like you said like having it was a much more pleasurable experience like doing it together and maybe we or she would she was... would she have just been quiet she may have just been quiet you know, right like right? that's the like, part uh, too of that's an amazing thing we don't know what is yeah. happening in her little mind yeah but the fact that she actually did it with you yeah hmm yeah maybe she and was so, happier being engaged and and then like but i was no but i was like it was so much more enjoyable 
yes. doing that thing together. Yes. Like I could have done it by myself and done it right and yeah. done it done faster, but I was angry the whole time. <sighs> and then that's also like, yeah. I don't want to be the one. I, I opened a CrossFit box with you yeah. because we like to coach. Yes. And I like solving the create the, the difficult problems of what's the right scale or modification. Yeah. But I don't want to do it by myself. Yeah. Otherwise, I would just do it in my garage by myself. Yeah. I want to be collaborative with the athletes. So yeah. that's also the request. Like, come with ideas and questions. Yeah. Engage with the process. Yeah. The athletes who are like, ooh, I want to do that. But I got to tell you, like, I am, I am not feeling right. Yeah. right? And then, then, okay, I'll take that at least. Now, when you say not feeling right, is it pain? Is it soreness? Is it stiffness? What yeah. did you do last night? Right? Like, yeah. understand this isn't personal training. It's small group training. Which I feel like Joe the last week has been like, check all this. It's pain. It's soreness. It's but what the, I did last night. But the difference uh, being he also, it, he's figuring out and navigating what he can do with that food. Yeah. And then saying like, okay, I want to try this. What do you yeah. think? Like, he's coming with ideas. Yeah. It's not just a... Yeah. Baby bird me. Feed me. Yeah. Right. Like, and sometimes I will do that because I get it. Like sometimes that's also like, you might be at a place where you're like, just feed me, just feed me the answers. Yeah. Like, okay, I will. Got it. But like, but if it's every time at some point, I'm going to kick you out of the nest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you haven't figured out how to flap your wings a little bit, it's not going to be a soft landing folks. No. Like that. So and in a, in a sense, like, you know, dive school guy, He's actually gonna kind of like watching you crash and burn. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a little bit of pleasure in the chaos. Yeah. Right. Kind of like the yeah. I, I like watching you fail a little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut up, dude. <laughs> That's, <a> good... <laughs> That's the inside voice. <laughs> Uh, yeah that's good so I, I there were like two different points where i was like oh how is this connecting this this connects you're finishing up because you have oh, a pop, yeah. you have a population in the evenings tuesdays and thursdays who mm. are doing strength and move yeah they are some converts from the beast program some mm. back and forth from the beast program some newbies that never actually did the basic beast class yeah. and they're just doing strength and movement you have this like wet moldable clay yeah. that you get to 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 shape into athletes that have a different perspective on working out in the gym yeah what what is going well with them what do you like about that platform and that model do you know what i mean yeah. like like what makes that it's flipping awesome yeah. it's um, absolutely such a special and amazing program dude like i'm so glad you continued it and i will tell you n equals one andrew goes to it yeah. he has openly he doesn't talk a whole lot he has openly said numerous times i'm so glad eric kept that going yeah. it's really awesome henry and i are having such a fun time yeah. like it's such like he would not be miserable at the regular beast class yeah. but it would be more of like okay i know i need to do this but he wouldn't like be planning his whole day yeah. around going to the 4 p.m. class. He yeah. plans his whole day. When is he going to eat? How much homework is he yeah. going to do? What's he going to have? You know, like he plans it around being here at 7 15 yeah. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I think so. I think one thing I I think that really works is with it being a specialty class, and it's at this time these two days a week, um, and being a more specialty focused, like it's a smaller group mm -hmm. and it is like a more I, not that not that beast isn't a set time but it's some kids come tuesday thursday some kids come monday friday like you may not be with the same group every time yeah um it's the same group every time and so with that we're like like henry andrew and patrick and maya are four like very different personalities and like if they were just all just in school except for like andrew and um Patrick have known each other for a while yeah but like if they're in school like those four outside of this like they're like the breakfast club they're not going to hang out they're not going to hang out yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're also different but when they're in here like mm -hmm. they all you know and like I said Maya's really quiet but she has like a she has a bite and so like when she isn't quiet like and she'll put them in their place yeah, you know yeah. and, those, awesome. and sometimes it's just a look 
but at the same time like they're gunning for Maya to like you know do her thing and so it's it's cool like a and so I think it's a I love that it's it's these four and now essentially five it'll be a, there's gonna be a fifth one and then throwing Matt um very different personalities that probably wouldn't necessarily connect outside of this have found something to connect with have been all supportive supportive of each other have all like they haven't questioned that not that they have they do question things it's like why aren't we yeah. doing one rep maxes why yeah, aren't we doing yeah. one rep maxes yeah and it's just a like just follow it follow it yeah. follow it. and they do it and they get after it and uh, the structure of it i think also allows a little bit again because it's not a it's different from a crossfit class where we do have this we do have this we do have this it's not as much for time as it is for quality so there's more downtime too where like i can connect with it it is like you mean like, like, a, like sound a, mechanical the um efficacious movement is making them stronger how about that <gasps> right it's <amazing. laughs> and it's like a, and it's like a, it's like a strength game here where and i remember uh pat bar would talk about a lot where it's like it feels like a it's a harder day to coach because there's so much more downtime for you to be able to connect with your athletes and so like the conversations might be a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Keep I actually, there, I love that. I, I love those times. Yeah. And so it's, so I get that more and they get that with each other more. Mm -hmm. And so I think just from a, and then again, this product of they are getting stronger. They are yeah. moving better. I'm watching like the numbers all, on the board. I love that. It's people are, people look at that. They do. Like the adults are like, what is it? I'm like, oh, that's uh, the Tarek's crew, nighttime crew, oh, strength we were, and movement class. Yeah, and, we were doing, yeah. We were doing the spot therapy yesterday and I, you know, we were over on the walls, mm -hmm. like trying not to erase that board. And Kevin's looking at Kevin looks at it, he goes, oh, a couple of those scores. I think I might want to erase. I was <laughs> like, oh, yeah. more than his. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh yeah, the 12 year old girl, the deadlift one. <laughs> He's like, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're really freaking cool. Like yeah. it's, and so like, that's the part that I'm curious if you've noticed the Delta in again, because uh, our, our words fuel our thoughts, our thoughts fuel our behavior, our behavior fuels our habits and our habits determine our future. Yeah. And so if you're watching an, a change or seeing a change in the language that your athletes, you even talked a little bit about it with Andrew and some of his like, not with that attitude, I know, like, even yeah. though he's like, but he is, he's, it's saying it out loud. That's influencing what's happening in his head and his thoughts. <clears throat> and I, I see a difference in his behavior. Well, I see it. He he did it yesterday where it's like, again, we were doing 70%. They had to do a set, a, a set of 30 deadlifts at 70% of their max. And and he's, I really appreciate how he's kind of been checking himself. Like he knows how he feels. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, his weight, like based on his max, he would have been doing 30 at 210. Back squat? Uh, deadlift. Oh, deadlift. 30 at 210. Sheesh. And he... Um, and he and he looked at that weight instead of saying instead of saying i can't do that he he basically said to me he goes i was thinking of doing like 185 like can i see how 185 feels because this is going to be really heavy and in his mind it's like mm. i told him i was like i want you to get this done in as many reps as possible but it should still be i'm sorry as, as few, few sets, sets as possible but it should still feel heavy yeah and and uh guide. and so it was a good like he know he knew how he felt, so he didn't say he couldn't do it. And in his mind, he's like, "I'm going to see how I feel going up to it." And he and he ended up doing 185, and they looked awesome, and it kicked his butt, and ended up being right for him. And I think he's been he's been doing that a lot lately, where it's like when he was doing CrossFit four or five days a week, this is where his numbers were. Yeah. And he's and over the last few months, it's been more like maybe two to three times. He's doing some other stuff. Plus now we've got school back in the mix and he's tired because later in the night. Eating too much Chick-fil-A. Yeah. So he didn't eat it last night. Yeah, he, he did not eat it last yeah. night. And um, and uh, so he's just kind of like, instead of saying he can't do it, he's listening to his body and making the adjustments. Not saying he can't do it, but like finding this the right This is what I would like to do to feel this way. Yes. So he what takes, do you think about that? He takes my guidance and says, mm -hmm. I'm thinking I should do this. There you go. And like, cool. That's way better than I can't, I can't do, do that. I can't do 210. Because yeah. when you do that, now you're like, so you, am I supposed to sit here and figure it out for you? Right. Like it's oh, a right. And that's, so, see, now that's the, that's the healthier, yeah. still frustrated and still not the A answer, yeah. but that's still the healthier than good. Great makes my job easier because that's one less person I have to watch. Yeah. 
Right. That's what I want to say. Right. <laughs> It's like, cool, you can't do 210, then um, awesome. they're going to do their 30. You hang yeah. out until we do the next it's thing, the, right? So you remember when, so, and I have another thing come back to the blocks, but you remember when yeah. Ryan uh, went to the deadlift yeah. day? Yeah. He's like, hey, so my back kind of hurts. Again, and Ryan didn't say, I can't do deadlifts. Give me something else. Yeah. What he said was, my back really hurts. Is there another thing that I could do that could be similar? And the answer by the coach was, which we make fun, but like in my head, I do say this sometimes. Yeah. Like, no, you probably shouldn't have come today. Probably shouldn't have come today. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to need to cancel that membership and yeah. go somewhere else. Yeah. Like, because rightfully so. Like, yeah. that is. Also, Ryan, who would come at 5 a.m. Like, Ryan, like, this is what, like, Ryan would go, like, imagine getting up, going to a class at 5 a.m. Oh, right, right, right. Told, but, yeah, man, man, probably go home. Come. Yeah. <laughs> we all, I don't want to say that. Yeah. That's what the initial like you're in you're you're being an imposition on me. I did the point like okay, can you forget what your role is sit standing up there. That's all in there. Yeah. And we are human. I am human, yeah. but you're also I'm we're better than that. And mm -hmm. I can say like this is what I want to say. And actually I don't want to say that because I don't want to hurt you. What I want to do is offer a better uh option. Yeah. Be a better coach in that moment. And no longer just a movement coach. You're moving somebody metaphorically to a different emotional state. So offer them some feedback. Yeah. What that makes me think of, where does this apply? So those kids, the lessons you're teaching them are how to be people who say yes, or they're problem solvers. They have a growth mindset, like all of those psychological benefits. Yeah. You're teaching them experientially in the moment. You're modeling it. You're giving them opportunities to fail and succeed, yeah. right? It's so low stakes, but it's still really high stakes. They're learning social um, innuendo and dynamic yeah. with like social thinking of, hey, just because these four human beings are four people that I connect with here doesn't mean change the situation that they can't be different people in those situations. Yeah. And I can also accept them. I don't need to be in their circle every single time. Yeah. Like they get to have other friends. Yeah. I can respect their distance and their boundaries in those situations and we can still have this yeah. special place and that right like yeah. oh you mean people can be different versions of themselves across the spectrum of their existence yeah. oh weird right like so <laughs> there's like all this stuff that they're learning experientially so that when they come up against a challenge in their life that has nothing to do with crossfit it is the lessons that they've learned in CrossFit yeah. that are probably going to be the lessons that best translate to, to dealing with that situation. And I think back to the episode we did with Liz, it's going to make me cry a little bit. Yeah. When she said, it's like a fucking chipper. Yeah. Like that is so freaking true. Yeah. Like life is going to keep throwing problems at you. Yeah. And if you're the person who says, I can't do it, well, then guess what? You will be, yeah. and you won't do it and you will not succeed. Yeah. Or if you're the person that says, Ooh, that looks challenging. How do I get to the other side of that problem, yeah. that obstacle and treat it like a chipper and just take one step at a time, yeah. eat one piece of the elephant. Yeah. Don't eat elephants. That's weird. <laughs> They're too beautiful of an animal. <laughs> like we really should. Yeah. <laughs> I almost feel if I, if I walked it, yeah, between you you eating an elephant one bite at a time and a poacher, yeah. I'm gonna put you guys in the same camp. Yeah, like it's just wrong. Just leave the elephant alone. Just treat it like a chipper, all right? Yeah. Little like, little bits of it. Little bits. Put the elephant in a chipper? Wait, oh, that would be such a mess. <laughs> but that, yeah, that's the connection to where, like, you, like that program, yeah, the fitness is such a beautiful, wonderful byproduct, yeah, but. God, what those kids are learning yeah. and what I'm, I see it immediately. Like the days that the, the two or three weeks when there was a gap between the programs, yeah. I love my son, but he was insufferable. Yeah. <laughs> he know. is insufferable. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's like, oh, you're a joy to be around. Yeah. And I don't know where he gets that from. Yeah. If I go more than about 12 to 15 hours without doing something physical yeah. and high elevated heart rate. I'm kind of insufferable. Yeah. <laughs> so I know there is no more rest days for me. Yeah. Like I don't go. There full. are lower intensity days. Exactly. Yeah. Like today I have about 35 minutes. I'm going to do this workout. Yeah. 
but I'm going to do it with no warm up, a little bit of skill work afterwards, and I'm going to ride a bike and I'm going to do GHG sit ups. Mm -hmm. It's going to take me 28 minutes, 27. I have the whole plan right now. Already. I'm going to do it as soon as we're done recording this, like so that the rest of my day, I'm not a short tempered. I'm so short. I'm five five. I got measured again in that. Like I know I'm you're five. shrinking. I am shrinking. Matt is a, they are all officially taller than me by are over they? a half an inch now. Some almost a full. You start spiking this up a little bit. Yeah, got to go for it. But it's right. Like I am, I'm not as enjoyable of a person to be around yeah. and I don't enjoy life and yeah. what should be enjoyable because this is it. So I know that one of the things that I incorporate into my day is a daily movement practice. Yeah. And guess what? If it's ring muscle ups and I don't feel like I should be doing ring muscle ups, then don't do them. But I can do ring muscle ups. The question is, should I do them? Yeah. Right? Like somebody can run 400 meters. I guarantee you who walks in the store and they can do a GHD sit up, but should they do them the way that it's put together at that yeah. volume to get the stimulus that we talked about? Maybe not. No. Yeah. But you're going to do something. You you should do something else. And so when you walk in, be like, I, I don't want to do that, but I want to do something. And I want to be a part of this 60-minute class. Yeah. I'm thinking I should do da-da-da-da-da. Which is 100% joy. Like, we joke all the time. Like, there's Rx, there's scale, then there's, there's JX. JX. But I will tell you, JX. that woman over five years. Yeah has made a difference yeah it's been very but low horizon long trajectory yeah. and i'm in it i'm in it with yeah. her because effort will yeah. will make uh, is every rep perfect and we're not talking movement reps but is every rep of hers perfect no. no but it's okay because when she has a bad rep these days it's a mm, i didn't like that she knows it she fixes it yeah and half the time she fixes it on her own yeah I'm in. That's all I need. I just need to see you trying. Yeah. Consistently trying. Like that's it. And yeah. so like that's a she's a freaking success story in my book. Yeah. And I would argue if we had her on here and talked to her about it, she feels better. Yeah. Like the way she sees and perceives life is yeah. a better place and yeah. it hasn't been easy over the you know, yeah. years and months and stuff like, well, guess what? Life ain't easy. No. Anyway, it. yeah. So yeah. thank you for your, I actually, that I'm going to steal that right now. And that's going to be my gratitude is your strength and movement program on Tuesdays and Thursdays mm -hmm. with those kids, dude, it is, it is a model that is both scalable, replicable, but it doesn't need to do anything, but serve five, six to eight kids. Yeah. 68 kids. You no, know, six to eight kids, six to eight kids consistently. Yeah. And when that, when you get 15 that want to do it, the answer is, you know, I'm capped at eight, yeah. but I'd love to let you work with one of our other wonderful professional coaches yeah. named uh, Sophia, who is amazing yeah. on Wednesdays and Fridays. Yeah. How does that sound? You got three of your friends that want to do it? Great. We'll sign you all up. Send them all up. <laughs> I love the, uh, I'll say with that group too, I love, um, so people will do this as adults, but kids like, kids have a little bit less of a, I don't want to say impulse control or filter, but like during that 30 yesterday, uh, like Henry was doing it. And then he was like over, like talking to, he was over talking to Matt or something. And Andrew goes, Henry, how many have you done? And he's like eight. He goes, get back on the damn bar. And like Andrew yelled at him. He's like, we're all done over here, Henry. And I love, and I love the, like, it's the, it's like the trash talking, but it's from like a, Hey man, like we all like we all got this done yeah and you're here too well, they're invested in each other now yeah, too i think it's totally awesome invested in well each and other. you could even i mean i'm sure a psychologist could have a field day with that one of like so andrew compares himself to henry uh -huh. they're in a healthy competitive yeah. productive um uh, mutually supportive way yeah totally. so if henry slacks off and doesn't do as well as he know as andrew knows he could yeah. when andrew quote unquote beats him his victory will be what a pyrrhic victory it will be less yeah. beneficial and it'll be sort of an empty victory their their so, their comparisons push each other right and so in a, a sense there may be like a subconscious thing happening there too of like yeah. well i can't let you fail because if you fail because you didn't work hard as i know you can as hard as i know you can yeah. then when i beat you it's not really a win yeah like that's also if 
So if we are working out together, this is why I love when we did the, the Thursday releases and stuff, yeah, yeah. because the scaled version of the open wad nine times out of 10 was programmed so perfectly yeah. that you doing the scaled and me doing the RX was actually a good comparison yeah. that I didn't want you to beat me. And I would, and it was enough to stay right. Yeah. And nine times. And as long as, and so Andy and I have found he's actually much better at, he scales himself correctly mm -hmm. to to be at a point where like he's just better than I am. And that's when like we hit that sweet spot. Yeah. yeah. Again, in the end, doesn't matter who wins, yeah. but the win pushes each of us to a better and a better result of improving our fitness yeah. and emotionally, physically making us feel like that that's where like, that's where it. like competitiveness can have like a stigma to it. That it's like, there's a very. Yeah. A bad, a bad stigma. Yeah. The good yeah, stigma is. Stigma, yeah. So bad it's stigma, funny. Yeah that's healthy not trash talking but that's healthy mutual accountability yeah. that they're holding each other to yeah because yeah i'm invested in you now yeah so like classmates you're allowed to hold each other accountable yeah. and actually of all the classes that i coach the 9 30 class is the best at this yeah. they don't let each other off the hook yeah they and in such a caring and loving way but with like no subterfuge. There's no passive aggressiveness. It's a, you can do more than that. Oh, yeah. come on. And then when they do it, they are like legitimately then so happy for each other. Yeah. Whereas like 5 a.m. doesn't even make eye contact most of the time until it's all over. And I'm just like, you guys are allowed. To, you're allowed to talk to each other. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but I also appreciate the, all yeah. the memes and stuff of like, you know, 5 a.m. Like they, they're just not awake yet. Like I get it. It's all right. So yeah, right. yeah like it's fun and we yeah. get there. Yeah. Yeah. They're a tight knit group. It's good times. Cool. Uh um yeah, my gratitude. Uh um it is it did you have a job to no nine o'clock? Time to go. Yeah. Gratitude real quick. <laughs> uh -huh. Mike Capitan, it was cool. So it was fun. Like I've had a fun couple of weeks, like kind of getting to know him a little bit more. But we ended up. I need to come to, I need to, coach sure. class. I need to come to some nighttime I, class. I miss ooh, him, man. So much fun. I never get big him. But I'm pretty sure, like we stood after class Monday night, sixteen, talked for I, like a good forty five minutes at least. Oof. It's just like everything. Like, yeah. You talk about a, like you know he has a small business. This is a small business. Like so, like that, and like we talked politics. We talked yeah the coronavirus. We talked. Uh, kids we talked family like all these different things and there's a lot of stuff that we do differently and we feel differently about but man it was like a good like conversation of getting to know each other and yeah. like if anything more it's like i like that guy even more after Heck talking to yeah. him, right and it's like uh it was just nice because it's like even though and like i said when it comes down to like some certain things like we disagree but we respectfully disagree mm -hmm. and like i i it felt good because i feel like that's really hard to find right now and and it, and it takes, I mean, it would take some work to, to yeah. actually have to put aside the, the narrative you're telling yourself and maybe yeah. hear somebody else's yeah. side of something. It doesn't mean you have to agree with them. Yeah. Like it's not, like, we've had these conversations. It's yeah. like, we're not trying, no one's trying to change the judge's mind. Yeah. It's just a, and so like, like, from and this like, a, it's like, oh, interesting. like a chipper over it. time, yeah. you know, you may find that you kind of more common ground than difference. And yeah. Oh, so weird. Like, yeah. yeah. Cause that's not fitness, but yeah. You mean, you can do that in a place where people right? see you and respect you and but that was the yeah. and that's the whole like relationship building side because oh, it's like yeah. uh i just had fun getting to know mike and i'm like man that guy's awesome uh, like, i had fun hanging with him so he is yeah. awesome i saw him we saw him at esport kitchen he was coming in picking up some food and then uh he's like god dang it it was friday night because <laughs> i was i told you he was the one yeah uh, oh, it was fun too watch him do his wall balls his wall balls are smooth but he did uh i always remember because it was the josh bridges rich froning wall balls and he does the oh he does and he does that oh, yeah so he hits it and then does the big yeah and they were so smooth but that big like relaxed so he's like yeah it keeps the blood flowing and i was like i was like it does like holding your arms up here your arms it get, does like, get tired I, I don't just i don't know if yeah. it needs to be quite so big maybe it could just be like a resetting up but um, but it looked so smooth i'm yeah, like hey. it's like did it have to be so big no but, but it man, keeps it looks, moving yeah. like yeah you look like an angel that's a good gratitude man yeah. i like i like mr capitan capitan all right. Well, awesome. all right. Thanks for the uh, you know pseudo therapy session. Appreciate it. Feel yeah. better. Love all of you. Likewise. Be nicer to yourselves because this bus driver ain't gonna do it. This guy yeah. back here, he ain't gonna do it. Yeah. Nobody really liked that guy anyway. Yeah. So he's usually 
drunk and hung over and smelled like bourbon most of the time so <laughs> part of a lot all right folks we will see you on the creek mm-hmm.